Sorry, Blake. Oh, okay. Good. Sorry, that's not the mayor okay. in the call in the hallway. Okay. okay. So we're recording. Yeah. So welcome to the utilities meeting, May fifteenth, here at City Hall. We're starting out with touch free water meters discussion. Yes. Yeah, so I know that the mayor's had conversations with public works staff. Uh, we added this to the uh, agenda at the last minute, and I think. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, that basically you're just wanting to have a more aggressive meter replacement Good. program. Yeah. Now there's... By, but then identify the cost to possibly, if we need to, hire a vendor. But there's a reason why we're doing it 20 or 50 at a time. And it's and we've learned from a past jurisdiction. What jurisdiction was that? Everett? Or yeah. City of Everett went through and they said, we're gonna replace them all. So in one year program, they replaced every meter. And then what happened was 20 years later, when all the batteries went out, they had to do another, oh, wow. every one of them, they all, it wasn't like, right. it was, <clears throat> was it made they I'm not proposing we do every meter in one year, but yeah. let's, let's, Take a bigger bite out of well, the apple. How many are we doing? We're doing like I, fifty so a year. So what's the background right? on this? I'm sorry. How I'm many not, are there? Well, like oh, two thousand labor savings. Right. But well, we're we're manually reading. So we're going through and replacing with touch read meters, so they'll walk what went wrong with a wand and right. just touch it. Right. Versus opening the hatch, reading the meter, and, and entering it. Okay? Right. And so if we the more of these we get done, the less labor intensive it is to have. The meter's red. Absolutely, and I understand all that. I, I think my house is a um, touch read. Most likely, my I got a new meter last year. Okay, I have. A I touch wasn't read. aware so that we we're, we're going through. No, I would say how many how many manual meters do we have left out there? Probably okay. six or seven hundred. Yeah, five hundred. Oh, okay. Out of <clears throat> three thousand. Yeah, if you include. And this is meter. about those remaining. Yes. yes. Okay. Replacing the remaining six or seven hundred. Okay. We're doing. 30 or 40 a year. Well, we're doing a little bit more than that. Right? I think we're closer to 100. So five years. In the past two years, we've okay. bumped it up. I mean, I think it's reasonable to look over the next maybe three years and say this is what the cost will be, and this is how many hours. You know, as you go through and you replace your meters, you typically replace things in sections, um, and you, you know, avoid some of the harder to do services. So the ones that are left are the more difficult areas of town where it's not just a five minute job it's more like an hour and that's if you can get the cork shut off and we've got you know aging infrastructure issues i think i think, a, I think a three or four year process would be ideal i just don't want to limp along for six or seven years right well how many do we, so, so we that's got what this is about is how we get it done how do we get it done sure. and how do we get to so that we're all touch read meters and that we can realize some labor savings I would in say, our public work staff. I would sure. say for the next utility meeting, maybe we just bring forward a projection of three to four year cost amount. And how many we can do it, how well, we can set get, a plan. So talking about inventory, do we have, how difficult would it be to create a sheet, some, some sort of inventory that shows we already, we already have them. So you've got a sheet that shows how many, why did we, in the last 10 years, how many have we converted, for example? Oh, um, we could generate something. I don't, think I, that's, don't that's, do something. I don't think that's as relevant as how many are left and how are we going to do it and what's the cost is. And whether or not you guys have the staff or we need to hire Caseco or, I mean, not to mention names, but a, a contractor, um, you know. To come and put it out to bid and come out and do maybe they don't do all of them because the really difficult ones they're gonna we're gonna spend a whole bunch of money on but if there's a neighborhood right. where they can go in and do 40 of them at a reasonable cost sure um, you know the other benefit consider that the other benefit to touch read too is, the, is you see the increase in accuracy because you're not manually punching in numbers <clears throat> and that's that's where it's it's huge I mean, you, right. if you punch in the wrong number, now you've got to send a guy back out to go get a, I mean, it's a snowball right. effect. So there's three levels of meters. Mm -hmm. There's manual. the manual read, the touch read, and then the electronic. Um, 
the, Is the electronic can you re view it remotely you just yes. drive by oh yeah the That's disadvantage of that though is is you lose track of your infrastructure the things yeah. get grown over yeah. then you have a problem with it and you, you there's no you, eyes on it there's no right. eyes on it that's yeah. right and I'll, well, at least now if we're walking by it and touching it if there's water you bubbling out on the ground you see the problem yeah. well it's actually funny because there's some jurisdictions who went to uh, fixed base radio read, which is where you don't even have to drive around. <laughs> you just hit a button in the office and it pulls yeah. all the information, yeah. right? Then they had to create a maintenance schedule for somebody to go out and inspect the meters quarterly <laughs> because they weren't looking at them and they lost that relationship with the, with the meter and it's, you know, I think it's great technology, but you really got to look at, do you want to see your infrastructre right. every and other month? And right. the cash rate, the, and they say that, you know, the water meter is the cash register to your utility. Yes, it is. So you have to make sure that you have a relationship with that meter. Mm -hmm. So, so we okay. can put together a <laughs> okay. funny so relationship with the meter. Well, thank, thank you for um, bringing that forward. Okay, so it will be to be continued. And we'll have a uh, future. Yeah, yeah. All right. So okay. Uh, this is so we've already talked about the the city hall boiler HVAC. This is mainly to get this in the minutes, mm -hmm. which was the findings from the Hermanson report. We're currently. I have Cindy and Mike Pleasants working on the HVAC side. Um, looking at the, the camp contract and looking at having the system gone through. Um, We're to include these boilers, which, include. We, which we determine have useful life left. They just need to be um, serviced more frequently and, and better maintained. Did you say that one meeting was it 12 years? At yeah, least? They, uh, 15, yeah. To 20. 15 to 20 years with proper maintenance. That's a long time. We had another vendor telling us that we needed to replace them. And they wanted to do it for us, right? Yeah, for $80,000. <laughs> <laughs> At this cheap price. Of yes. All right. Okay, so that's really just, like you, you guys talked about this at mm -hmm. yeah, council. Yeah. This yeah. is just mainly to get it into the minutes. Um, okay, so street lighting. We have a meeting next next one, week. Next, next week at next one o'clock somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we found the original schedule seventy four. This isn't the actual street lighting plan. He's still looking for it, but this is the schedule seventy four from two thousand seven. I think it was. It was just before I came here. Yeah, it was when I first got on the council. It was, and we it was ten years ago. Right. And so we've done just the Sydney portion of that. Well, right. we get and there's a culvert or a, a crossing there at Frederick. In Frederick. There's no there's no wire in that. Right. Oh, I see. That was there's in vault a, set and there's and there's there's a conduit in the ground. But that was in advance of the state doing the paving. The repaving. Um, so we're gonna revisit because our plan currently only has lighting on the, on the south, south side, side and, and bollards, bollards on the on the north side. And we need to revisit too whether this is the right light fixture. So That's we, we want a light. I think we want a light fixture that we can like Gig Harbor hang a flag on if we want to. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to put the hanging baskets mm -hmm. on it. It needs to have the. Need some versatility. The, um, <coughs> the, this is what we have at the Decal Pier. This is what we're going to have at Tremont. Doesn't have you know. But we, we, we need, there's things that we need our light fixture to, whether this can do this or not. You know, whether the irrigation needs to be built into it and we need to be able to have a, a point to tether uh, the, the lights that the Merchants Association is talking about doing. And then, then, so then these lights need to be on both sides of the street so that we can tether the, the <coughs> lights to them. It may be the right fixture, but it may not be. Okay. Did you say irrigation built into mm -hmm. into the light standard? Mm -hmm. huh. Nick that's said they, the center? Yeah, that's what Nick said they did in Eatonville. Huh, I've not seen your that your tubing before. goes right up to the center of it. So that what happens if you've got a problem with the tubing and you need to replace you just it? Just pull it. It's hollow. But you just pull it straight. It's pull it hollow. Straight out. You just pull it out. Too bad you can't make it water the plants too. That's what he's. Well, that's the idea. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. Drip, your drip system runs 
the tubing runs right through the center of the the light fixture. Does that cost a lot more? No. Well, we're we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're do it anyway. anyway. We're doing it anyway. So then, do the poles? The poles are wet around. To me, the issue isn't the tube going at the center. It's the water getting to the tube. Yeah. Oh. In the base. Of course. Yeah. Is that what's that coming off? Of? It's coming off a secondary that's got a backflow device someplace. That's. It's no different than any other drip system. I mean, it's just incorporated in the design. Well, the one that they've got right now is that Brenda Cruzy put in. They've got. But the marquee is going to be gone. You can't span a drip line from the side of the building. Right, but she, Come everything across. comes out of her so thing. She's got thing. one back <laughs> and we, could, we could find out it's cost prohibitive to have it, and we got to step away from the baskets. But <clears throat> we need to know those answers. Do, so we're we going to we're, we're, we're this we, into the budget? We're, we're, well, we're, we're, we're step one yeah. is identifying identify the, the the lighting plan and what it's going to cost to, to do with the different options. And then the other piece of the meeting that we're going to have is with um, PSC regarding the Titus project and whether it makes sense to do a Schedule 74 on those four poles, three right. four poles in front of the Titus project as they're uh, rebuilding that. There could be an opportunity. What is 74? What is that? It means a 60 40 split between us and PSC oh. versus us just doing it. They pay 60. I thought that they were going to be places anyway. No, they, we would put them underground. Underground in place oh. of the split. See, that, yeah. Gotcha. Going underground, well, well Titus is, because they're going to take the three-foot sidewalk and make it a six-foot sidewalk. If we're going to rebuild all that frontage, why would we leave those utility poles in the ground? So we, we need to ex at least explore it and find out what the cost is going to be. So that Let's meeting at one o'clock. Yeah. Is there any way we can get Titus to add like a cafe and condos upstairs or something and make it less of a car lot? <laughs> no. I mean, more of a work. Um, the dream on. Well, we can ask. <laughs> you know, it's waterfront. When you look at the sales tax data, I know. Uh, there's some big box stores here in town and car dealerships that are all in the top five. And the revenue generators. We, you know, I, I, I know it's not ideal we would want it. He's it's his property and he's committed to the development of it. And, and he's done a lot for the community. I just, it would has. be great if he could add something else. His yeah. yeah. design, though, is see through and it's going to be yeah. quite I mean, it's pretty pretty. one story of condos upstairs. Yeah. I don't think he can get, he doesn't have enough height. Is it mixed use, though? It's just about no, no, he's just doing it. He's, he's he's doing it. A, and when it's done, the other building is there. gone. I mean, yeah. you're looking over the top of cars, but you're going to have it's gonna be a much and beautiful, yeah, much bigger view of the waterfront from you know from the sidewalk. And just one observation, and we can move on from <coughs> Titus. The landscaping, I hope, is a little more robust than what we got with Dick Bliss. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think what, whatever our code list is. I think it looks, so, it looks so clean. Tremendously I think that looks so nice. Well, well like some low shrubs. shrubs. I know it's all about curb appeal, but something other than just grass would be nice. Well, that's a storm system. It's, it's bioswale. It doesn't have any other thing than grass. That's all it's got. Well, bioswale. It's, it's, it's yeah, bioswale. Bio no, I know. He's well, it's not just a biocell. It's a bio-retention. Mm -hmm. It's got the sand and the... His, he's doing shrubbery and landscaping on the hillside the behind it. It's really quite nice. But up front, there I don't think they could have. That grass strip in the front. Yeah. He, he, he. I'm, I'm hoping that we can have a little more thought about landscaping. Yeah, I think we're beyond that. No, he's talking for, about. I, I, I realize I, we're beyond the plans. Of it. Well, he has to meet. Okay. The, he has to meet. Whatever our code yeah. requires, he's going to do. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, anyway, so we're meeting next week at one to talk about street lighting and and the potential ties. schedule schedule some for And you're meeting with PSC. Oh, okay. Can that? Can someone else come to that meeting? Sure. So, are we talking about the marquee or one no? o'clock? I know that. Um, that this is step one before the marquee. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and then potentially a phased approach to implementing because you've got four quadrants. You know, and we've got multiple crossings. Can we implement this in phases? So we come up with a lighting plan, you know, and <coughs> potentially implement it in phases because we can keep talking about this elephant, but let's start find a way to maybe take some bites out of it. Now we're eating a lot of elephants right now. We are. Yeah. Um, the next thing is, it's just again, this is informational. 
uh, that we get stuff from waste management periodically. So one is from Kelly McCain Means. It's just the uh, it's their draft preliminary plan. As you know, we have waste management as our vendor, but they work through contract with Kitsap County, and Kitsap County has the, the solid waste and hazardous waste program. So we have an agreement with the county. So this is basically just saying that, that they've got their draft plan um, and looking for comments. The other thing is just Laura Mosier had just sent us a, an email that said that they were what? Changing the collection date? Yeah, for some of the 24, 24. customers. And again, this is just more than a, because waste management falls under utilities. Just kind of letting you know. So it's just informational. Okay, the next one is really on the Thomas getting into more detail. This is a very significant undertaking um, by the city and by McCormick Communities LLC. As you know, McCormick Communities LLC purchased. They purchased all the remaining <coughs> McCormick proper and McCormick West and McCormick North development rights. They have an, a, a very aggressive development schedule, um, a schedule that uh, kind of goes beyond the city's capital improvement plan as far as time frame. And what so, are they looking for build out then? Uh, 20. Between now and 2030. Well, I just saw the map. It was like 100 homes a year. They, the they can't build the 170 houses that they have without making at least sewer infrastructure right. improvements right away to one of the stations. And then they can get track D done, right? Can't they with water? It's track E that they'll have to make water system improvements. And, and then this is all stuff that's in our capital plan, mm -hmm. but it's, but year, it's years around. out yeah. and, and they're wanting to build houses tomorrow. Right. And some of it's, that was always identified as a developer base, some of it was city, but anyway, I'll let Thomas go in more detail. Well, I think the, the, the update here is we're really close to having an agreement. Um, I worked with Jeff Terry from White House for a couple of days last week going through um, we let them do the kind of the yeoman's work on creating the draft um, so that we weren't paying attorney's fees to have that drafted. Um, we got it and Jeff and I went through it. We redlined it um, pretty extensively um, and really vetted the entire thing. He then went back and met with McCormick's attorneys again. They're talking about just we had questions on some definitions and intent and different provisions we wanted to see in there. Um, one of the things that I had told them was that I wanted the agreement to be um, well-defined and extremely simple. I didn't want it to be complicated because everybody needs to be able to read this document and understand what's going on because it is pretty, uh, it is, it is pretty large. If you flip back to table three in the packet <coughs> that you're looking at, it's the second to last page. This is the opinion of probable costs for the improvements that McCormick will make for the city. Um, and if you go uh, at the very bottom, you've got the total, <coughs> total estimated project cost of 11.9 million. That's what McCormick is going to build for us over a you know, probably a 10 year period. Um, in doing so, they will, uh, they will get a reduced capital facilities charge. Um, and the reduction that they receive is twofold. One, they obviously get the 11.9 million backed out over the course of 3,700 homes, right? So they're not they're not they're not getting double dipped on on what they're building as opposed to what they're purchasing. And then they also receive a little bit of a reduction um, for infrastructure that they don't use. So when we capitalize assets, you know, one of the things that Katie and I worked on was. Um, understanding which assets you as a homeowner benefit from and which assets you don't. And so when you do these calculations, you come up with which force mains are they using, which lift stations are they using, and making sure that you're capturing the, the right cost. So um, there's a financial incentive for McCormick to do this. Um, 
at the same point in time, uh, there's a huge incentive for the city to incentivize their development. Um, we reached out to both Lighthouse and McCormick's attorneys who found an RCW where we have the legal authority to, to do an agreement like this. Um, most of the times they're, they're easier to do in different jurisdictions. We're not, uh, we, we have a harder time because of being a second class city. We, it's just more of a process to jump through these hoops to get here. Um, so it's taken, you know, this is probably something that um, we've worked on for about eight months. Will that change once we're at Code City? Uh, I believe it will. We have better, we're, we're on firmer ground and it's the, it, it benefits us, not the developer. It's the, when you, when this, in the unlikely event, this went sideways, mm -hmm. you know, and the economy tanked and they did half the improvements and now we're in court, the judge going, well, city, where's your legal authority right. to enter into this agreement? And we're going, well, this RCW kind of says this and we think we can do this, but as a code city, it's our code. But there's no real, other than that, there's no real practical benefits that you would see. No. Yeah. No. And, and one thing is when we did, you know, previous agreements were credit based. Yes. Right. And, and, and this one, or we proceeded down this as credit only, but we found an RCW that allows reimbursement, correct? Yeah, there's, you know, and I've kind of left it up to Jeff and Sharon to decide what word we use. Is it credit? Is it reduction? Is it reimbursement? You know, whatever you want to call it, it's we're getting an extremely large amount of capital built for us and they're paying us their appropriate share. Um, so I would hope that I've got a red line from Jeff either this week or next week and that we can bring that forward um, as kind of a more polished draft for people to start looking at. Um, I didn't, we need, we didn't need want to bring this, We need to bring it back to the utility committee before work study or take it to work study from a time perspective. Do we have time to bring it back to another utility committee? Or should uh, I just put this on? Not. Just put it on the June work study. Probably. Okay. Yeah, because I would think that we we're getting close and we want to, you know, now that we have gotten rid of the bad drafts, we'd like to let you look at a more refined uh, robust draft um, and we're right there we're right around the corner so it's exciting I know McCormick has already started um, uh, they've done survey and topo and they're talking with ROM tech and they're gearing up to rebuild um, rebuild is a loose term they're they're constructing a new lift station for McCormick one uh, which is a much larger lift station than what's out there now uh, Right, so many employees. Well, dry well. Yes. Um, increased storage capacity, um, increased uh, pump capacity, um, and also there are some safety measures that we put in there. We we wanted access to our facilities differently, so they weren't confined spaces. So now you've got an open an open faced stairway, so you're not sending guys down in hatches. They're actually working in cleaner environments. So it's 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 a pretty big. Uh, so McCormick Pump Station one is big, and then the next piece is getting well twelve drilled. Well twelve drilled. Yes. One McCormick List Stations one and two were the two. They're pretty fragile infrastructure. Infrastructure. They. Um, that's part of why we we went to the conversion of the step systems because of the corrosive nature of what was being put out was eating those lift stations up. So McCormick really wanted to come in and just put bigger pumps in the existing. Uh, lift stations and it's, it's, the infrastructure is just too fragile. The, the controllers, the, the vaults, yes. it's, it's, they need to be redone. So. so there would still be two lift stations? Mm -hmm. they're, be they're separate areas. Yeah. 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 Okay. McCormick Point is down there right, right, right at the end of It's down kind of below Evergreen Lumber. Yeah. And then McCormick 2 is at the entrance. Okay. The entrance yeah. <coughs> Okay, um, so we'll bring this, we should be able to make the June. I emailed study. Jeff this morning and asked him for an update, so when I talk to him, I'll tell him we need it for June. And schedule, pre I think that we need a presentation. I don't know that we need a presentation. Well, so even if it's just Thomas. I mean, we, yeah. can, we can talk about it. Can you do a slideshow of the map or something? Yeah. Laser pointer. <laughs> Okay. Thomas and the attorney talking to the legality of it and the benefits. 
it's more important than other important. Yeah, I don't think we need to have BHC there, but I think. No. Um, okay, so well eight. So as you know, we had well eight go down and we went out to bid and we got a company to replace the pump and we've been buying city of Bremerton water. $60,000 a month worth. Oh yeah. And so when, so we have a change order that will, is on the agenda for next, no, for tomorrow. No, this work study, it's next week. Next right. week. Next week. 23rd. That is going to have to go to council because it's significant. It's 53% of the, the value. And what it is is when they went to pull the pump, the basically the, the piping within the casing <coughs> is shot. Does it look exactly like this? This is, is the, this is it. This is it. I mean, this is actually kind of pretty. You could sell it as artwork. Yeah. You would look at like some pull out some pieces out for you. Or Damien Hurst or something, you know, that, <laughs> that, that modern yeah. art. Yeah, anyway, so this is an unintended it's, consequence. It's not a good thing in your water system. Yeah. It's unintended consequence. The, 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 the down pipe or uh, the so, drop pipe is shot. Yeah, when you, so in the well, you've got a 12 inch casing. Inside of that 12 inch, you have a six inch down pipe, and that's what the water actually travels through. So what you're looking at is the outside. You're not, uh -huh. your potable water's not touching this. Right. The problem is, if you look at the pump that's there now, you'll see that the screen's caved in on the yeah. side, right? What happens is this scaling falls down and it calcifies, and then when that pump kicks on, it's basically like standing in Casey's batting cage just waiting for the machine to kick on, right? You've just got these amounts of material hitting the side of that casing. so. The other, the other service that's in here is not just replacing the 367 feet of drop pipe, but it's also, they're going to scrub the <laughs> inside of the casing and they're going to surge and bail the bottom. So they're going to get all that material out of there so we're going to put a pump in there and then it fails within two years. So I know it's, you know, it's a sizable amount, but it's really, it's what's needed for that well. Right. In the city, when I first came here, I had been told that, well, it had, even though it's one of our better wells, water quality wise, manganese wise, didn't have any manganese issues, was declining and the city in the past had tried to to recover the well and surge it and, and they weren't having much luck. Well it's you know ten years later it's like well yeah now why why? So and we have the funds for this. Yeah. Yeah it, it's water it's we'll take a budget so. amendment. Yeah. But it's you know, I mean, just, we're buying water from Bremerton because this well's offline. It's costing us more to buy the water than it's going to for kind of one a, month. It's actually a no-brainer. Yeah. Right. Would we it, resell that out, though? <coughs> what, what do we resell that out? Not we are we we're, we're, we're not. We we haven't increased anybody's water bill because. I mean, are we losing because of that cost, or are we absolutely we are. Yeah, yeah. So we're losing sixty a month. Well, we have an expense. We had plant. We we normally we only budget. buy water, Bremerton in the peak time, to to meet demand. We're buying water in the winter time right now because well eight's down. Because well eight's down. We got to get this back online before summer. <coughs> that bill's going to double. Right. And this can be done pretty quickly. Well, once it's approved, um, they'll have to they'll have to get the pipe. They fit it. They fabricate it in their shop, and then they they bring it out. Um, and this. This is not the most expensive option. They'd emailed us bigger numbers and we called them and said, hey, we're going to need you to sharpen your pencil. And so right. they gave us a little bit of a break here. And, and so, like I said, this. So this it's, is one of those. The old pipe is gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is one of those scenarios where <laughs> yeah. it would have been nice to just issue the change order, but it, it was exceeds both yeah. ours, so yeah. we have to. Yeah. Yeah, I have a hundred thousand in authority, but only ten percent of contract amount. Mm -hmm. so this was fifty percent of the fifty-four percent of the contract amount. So yeah, we have to get to council. Um, okay, so that's well eight, the well nine. So this is just to let you know that we had gone out a 
for CACM, Construction Administration, Construction Management Services for the Well 9 retrofit. We received some proposals, um, qualifications, because we were going to interview, and then we hired Mike Pleasance, who has a lot of experience in this type of work, even on uh, state and federal, federally funded. And so what we're going to do instead is that I'm putting together a uh, contract. I should get it today, a proposal. It'll also be on the 23rd. Is that we'll do exactly what we're doing on Bay Street, where on Bay Street we have the engineer of record, which is H. On that one, it's Olson Associates that is just providing engineering support, but we're having CACM done by Exotech. On this one, we're going to have um, HDR, who's the engineer of record, just be engineering support, and we'll have Mike do the CACM. So that means if we have a special inspection, if we have a question of in design, of the design during construction, then we'll go to HDR and they can have a budget to to come out to answer questions, respond to RFIs, request for additional or request for information. Um, but we're going to manage this internally. So this is mainly just to say we're not doing the CACM externally. We're doing it internally. But we will be doing the uh, engineering support. So what's the savings mark to do that ourselves? Oh. Well, we rough, would have, rough order magnitude. Uh, I would say we're easily saving fifty thousand dollars easily, because Mike's only going to be out there part time, and even capturing all of his time, um, I, I would say between fifty and hundred thousand. Because a, this is a eighteen month right. project project to have somebody out there doing that. It would we, have been we like, talked a little bit too at the work study about getting some some support for construction administration and what, what that looked like and there's something the finance committee is going to see uh, next later this week or next week I can't remember what their meeting is and then it'll come to the full council I've got an idea how we're going to it's not projects. we're going to get we Mark's department needs some help and, and it's my idea is going to be at least in the short run let's get some clerical staff to take some of this uh, not so technical stuff. So it would be some financial and clerical support. Makes sense. Uh, to so that Mike and Thomas and and Mark can be doing the big stuff. stuff at their at their pay level. What is DE goal? Oh, that's a disadvantaged business. Oh, okay. okay. DB and WBE. I think this one had a zero. Okay. See. Um, okay, so that was that. And so, well, 13, this is really just getting again into the file. The official uh, amendment A, which was transferred, so well 10 technically no longer exists. It's the well 13 project. Right. And this this letter was the letter that the finance department wanted as a source document to make sure that they weren't going to look for any reimbursements of the Perry Avenue work, make sure that we could actually do what we're doing. And so this is the official letter. Where are we at on that project? So Well 13, we're waiting for CEPA to close. Uh, we had to get a forestry permit uh, because the amount of timber, I think it's 50 million it's over the 50,000 50, board fee or yeah. whatever to, so we need an FPA okay. um, so we're just going through all of those processes and I think that we're probably three weeks away from those being closed and then we can actually drill so I've Have got we ordered a contract for that drill no okay. no um, I've got the uh, spec that I was going through with Mike Scott Kramer um, with the uh, uh, Robinson Noble. Robinson Noble. Yeah. Um, so we're pairing so, the so we're, we're awarding a contract first for the clearing and grading and the logging activity, then awarding a contract for the drilling separately. We 
the problem that we had is with the forestry permit, um, originally we were just going to have Mankey Lumber come in and just take it all down for us, and they'd pay, they'd pay us. Yeah, but you have to go through a process for that. Um, to right. You can't just pick Yeah, we were going to go, but we were going to do like McCormick Village Park, where we actually sent out a request right. for proposals for the highest bid to just come take the lumber. Right. Where were we at on the, that? Are we still doing that? Forestry guys came back and said, you can't. Because of the type of permit we're trying to get, you can't barter, sell, you can't do anything. This is way. that's DNR stipulating that. Yes. So because it's, uh, it's not a conversion or it is a conversion. Or? We were trying to go with the forestry permit that's um, less restrictive. I don't think we're going to be able to do that now, um, just because of the sheer volume. So yeah, we're working on getting the contracts together or the. Uh, request for proposals um, I just talked to Cindy about it so so we're gonna go out for so clearing and grading is and logging is going to be one activity and then the, the well drilling, the well drilling is the second step in a separate contract yeah meanwhile I mean you know six million dollar project the well is one piece the other design is still moving forward um, I think they're pretty much done with the uh, Maple Avenue roadway Design so we can potentially award some of that stuff and get those contracts going on those improvements. Yes. It would have been nice. So we should get. That's unfortunate because that means we're going to clear and grub and log. We should we should get value from the timber. Like we will. This is how we go about it. It's the process. Yeah, and so in order for us to do that, we have to pay tax on that lumber and so the question that I put back was can we just have somebody like a Mankey come in and they handle it all and their what they bid for the for the lumber includes what they're going to retain in taxes for forestry I mean I, it'd just be nice to have somebody that comes in and does this and we don't have to deal with the, well again that's what we did in McCormick is the difference though that's a park and it's being this is more like commercial development and so it's, it's a different process. Yeah, this is a chop conversion harvest option plan or whatever. Well, and the issue is, is we're at 250 by 250 feet. I mean, it's a sizable area. Yeah. So. So they're going to basically log. We're going to go log out for an RFP. It. We're going to log, clear, and grub. Mm -hmm. Then they'll sell the timber, and then they'll. We have to pay the taxes. That, we pay the tax, but they give that. We'll get reimbursed that value. And and honestly, if we uh, if we get bids and they're not favorable, um, I've already talked with our crew, and it's something that we could do if we subbed out the trucking. Mm -hmm. If we had RV come in and just run truck for us, or just a contractor, we could easily do the work. What are you talking about a logging truck? No, just like dump trucks. We could do it. How would you move those out and dump trucks? We cut them up. We ground them. Um, yeah, but doesn't that make it less valuable? You don't give value. You got to go 12 well, foot lengths. That's a, step one. Is we got to determine the value. If I it has see. no value, then right. then we go. You if know. we don't see good value in it, right. then we could do the work for a lot cheaper. Do you know one thing? I think we need to do is have some. I mean, there'll clearly be a public notice of some sort. Mm -hmm. Information probably should go out so people have an understanding of what's going on. Right. Because once they see something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. That would be something that kind of scares them. Our yeah, we have a site. We have a site plan. Yeah, we have a site plan, and we're we we're, we're going through the SEPA process right now. Right. So. I'm I'm wondering if we though should be getting information out that this is part of what's happening. Like maybe even a letter to the neighbors. Is that what you're thinking? Well, just you just them? because. No. Well, they'll get noticed through SEPA. It's 300 feet. Right. I know, but that's not very. That's <clears> not very far, and because it's a. Pretty visible right, so area. You're so you're proposing that we get a whole bunch of uh, comment that we shouldn't do this, and we have to return the six million dollars and not no, develop our no, whole site. No, just the way we do a press release for closing Port Orchard Boulevard. Just well, that's we're, we're going through the yeah. Just, process. I, I, know, I know. I'm just saying, if people aren't surprised, if there's a way of doing this where they the public has a basic idea that it's under control and it's not going to ruin everything. Or they know what's going on. Yeah. We, can, see it. we yeah. can bring, we'll bring the site plan to the next utility committee meeting. Um, based off the area that we're working in, you won't actually see us. Right. Because there's so much forest around. So it's a 250 by 250 inside of it's a just forest. The noise. 
Well, okay. The well and the well drilling is going to be noisier than the logging activity. Right. Okay. For I, your I hear you. Pounding a pipe in the ground. And maybe in your next newsletter, we're making progress. Talk about the moving forward on the well and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, we can do that. That would be something to be very happy about. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. So next meeting, June nineteenth. Same time, same place. June 19th, yeah. June 19th. Okay. Okay, it's 1019. Thank you very much.